I think people had a, a sense of perspective about what worked and what didn't. You know, when I was reporting the book, it was 2009. And so we had no, nobody had any idea whether the TARP money would ever get paid back. Nobody had any idea whether Q, uh, QE1, let alone 2, 3, and 4, which didn't even exist at the time, uh, were going to work. What, the idea that, you know, the automobile uh, industry was being bailed out. I, I don't think anyone had any contemplation of sort of where we would be. But, and frankly, I would say, I think that at that time, if you would ask them then, if we would be where we are today at 3.9% unemployment and the money paid back and the economy uh, doing as well as it is, despite how uneven it is, and I recognize that, uh, I, I think they wouldn't have believed you. And do you think that fact, Andrew, means everyone more or less says, look, history has kind of ratified all of our responses or their specific kind of misgivings about exactly how uh, folks went about things? Well, there's a couple of things. And, and, and it's to the point that, that Tim Geithner was referring and we were discussing the issue of Lehman Brothers, which to this day does remain to some degree a debate, a, a mystery, if you will. Uh, uh, Geithner, uh, Bernanke and Paulson have said repeatedly they didn't have the authority. Uh, that is... Uh, the, what they say in terms of why the Fed did not uh, bail out Lehman. Uh, and, of course, the question is uh, whether that exacerbated the crisis, by the way. And there are others uh, in this documentary, uh, by the way, including the general counsel of Lehman Brothers, who you might expect. Uh, but another big name in finance, I will just tease you with that because you need to watch the documentary, who take issue directly with um, the view from Geithner, uh, Bernanke, um, and Paulson. So I, I think that issue remains for policymakers a big one. And then the question is, do we have the tools today, if in fact there were another crisis, uh, to deal with it? Uh, Dodd-Frank was supposed to. Um, I will tell you, the more you talk to a lot of the people uh, in the room then, they are worried actually that the tools make it harder, not easier, and that if and when uh, we get to another crisis, and we will, that ultimately uh, we won't really roll the dice. We won't, we won't take a chance on the way the new rules are set up uh, to let a bank fail, uh, we in fact probably will try to step in. So, so perspective perhaps to is powerful. Continues. <laughs> What'd you yeah, say? Yeah, perspective is perspective is powerful, as you suggested there earlier, Andrew. And so that perhaps has changed a bit since the initial reporting on the crisis. By and large, does everyone that you spoke to think that we are safer now? I mean, you just spoke a bit about some of the tools that have been in place and Dodd Frank. You know. Safer, yes, in terms of the traditional run on the bank that we would think of as the financial crisis that we lived through 10 years ago. The question is, and Brian Sullivan did a report this morning about, there is more debt today than there was then. The question is, who's holding the bag? Are the banks safer? Yes. Where is it elsewhere in the shadow banking system? But one of the things we haven't really talked about is the impact on culture, the impact on politics the impact on trade, this idea of populism. And it's a conversation I had with Ray Dalio, also who was on Squawk Box this morning, about when you look at financial crises, all of which, by the way, are always a function of debt more than just about anything else. Um, you go back to the Great Depression, you look at what happened afterwards, and he would tell you, you know where it ended? At Pearl Harbor. Uh, that people looked so inward, the trade became so complicated, the relationships broke down. And one of the things he talked about is the relationship we have with China, for example, right now. And so I think we need to look, you know, we need, we need to look beyond perhaps uh, Wall Street and, and maybe towards Washington, uh, but uh, maybe towards our allies and other partners. Yeah, no, that's uh, Kashkari has made similar comments on how uh, that event uh, sort of eroded trust in all kinds yes. of institutions. One last question, uh, Andrew. Jamie McGreever covers finance for Reuters and tweeted today, uh, in his mind, it's baffling that on anniversaries like this, we, we wheel out the regulators, the politicians, the central bankers from that time and ask them for lessons that need to be learned. Is that a legitimate gripe? You know, um, I have to say there has been a lot of uh, tomatoes and worse thrown at the, the people, quote, in the arena, if you will, at the time. I think it's very difficult to look at what took place over the last 10 years and not suggest it worked. Um, you could say it didn't work as well as you might have wanted um, or it was slower, but I'm not sure the alternative, and by the way, the alternative is, is it, we had a natural experiment. It's called the UK. You saw what the UK did. They did uh, all the populist things that you would have uh, thought that some people would have wanted, kicking the bankers out, uh, onerous loans to, to the banks, restricting spending, all of it. 
and uh, their economy is clearly no much the better. And talk about populism, uh, the, the Brexit is probably one of the greatest examples of that. So it's not clear to me that we can look at this situation and, and, and look at it as a failure. I do think there are lessons, and, and I think that history ultimately is going to look at uh, those uh, policies and policymakers at the time uh, fondly, though I know that's a very unpopular thing to say. <laughs>